Hello, welcome to another Lion's Table. Do not doubt. A reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 25. Have faith in God, Jesus said to them. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and has no doubt in his heart, but believes that it will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand to pray, if you hold anything against another, forgive it, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your trespasses as well. Amen and amen to that. Let's read now from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob, our fortress. Be bold in the Lord, according to my earnest expectation and hope that I will be ashamed in nothing, but in all boldness also now, as always, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 3, 12 says, Since this new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Ephesians 3, 12. And now reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Salvation exists in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they marveled and took note that these men had been with Jesus. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be toward some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. 2 Corinthians 10, 2. Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. Imagine David standing there before Goliath, a young boy in front of a Nephilim giant who could have been 12 feet or higher, carrying a massive shield, spear, sword, and uh, armor. In fact, he terrified the entire Israeli army. Everybody was afraid to take on Goliath, but not David. He was bold. And he wasn't bold in his own power. He was bold in trusting that God's covenant with Israel was real. And that's why he said, you know, to, to Goliath, you know, why is a, an uncircumcised Philistine like you threatening the people of God? You have no right to do it. He acted boldly. Some would say foolishly, but he was bold because he knew his God. And he all he needed was to trust God and be prepared and step into that. And God used a little pebble, a rock, to bring down a giant. And that's an example of the boldness we need. Christianity has become wimpy. And this doesn't mean we go around you know, throwing as, you know, con condemnation on everyone and judgment on everyone. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about boldly standing up for what is right. Boldly standing up when everyone else is afraid to, to talk, we talk. When everyone else is afraid of, uh, of, uh, of the truth, we speak it. When the enemy comes like comes, 
then like a flood, God comes in with his standard and we raise that standard and the enemy will flee and we can bring him down just like David brought down Goliath. Whippy Christians are no use to God. Boldness, speaking the truth, speaking God's word, saying what is true. You know, people will come to you, and, and I, I've heard this a lot, and say, what do you think about abortion? Or what do you think about homosexual marriage? Or what do you think about this and that? And I never tell them what I think, because what I think doesn't matter. What I tell them is what God says. And that's what I say. Indeed, and you are bold to say it. And that's, a bo that's boldness in righteousness. Amen. Let God's word speak for himself. If they have a problem with God's word, they can take it up with God. It's not my job to tell them my opinion when I know what God says. Amen. And we speak boldly and say what God says, regardless of the consequences. So that, to me, is how the righteous are bold like a lion. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for this Lion's Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you. Please join us again next time.